50 plus tips for Outlast Trials. Let's get straight into it with quick important menu tips. I highly recommend you turn on the light indicator. Here's how you get to that setting in the game. What this does is allow you to see whether you're standing in the dark or the light so that if an enemy is looking at you, you know if they can see you or not. While you're at it, you might as well turn on the sound indicator which helps you see how much noise you're making. One being a little bit of noise and three being loud. When the sound indicator turns red, that means someone can hear you. On this page, there are also other very useful settings as you play the game. You can hide certain other UI things if you don't like them. If you're somebody who gets motion sickness and the game is a little bit too motiony for you, you can turn off head bobbing and motion blur which I highly recommend doing in the settings, as shown here. I'm not sure if the FOV slider is there for anyone yet, but on PC I have a guide on how to change that here tagged in the top right, so make sure to check that out if you want to be able to see more. Moving on to avoiding traps. Glass is one of the least dangerous but most common and damaging to your grade. Be sure to be on the lookout for any glass and be able to crouch walk over it. You can also use the perk slippers so that you're able to walk over the glass without any punishment. Another tip, if you want to get that perk, you can unlock this lady up here and get her perks by leveling up in the game. This is how you can get slippers. The dangling cans are also just as annoying as glass, although luckily it's not as hard to spot. Once you spot cans, you can usually either crouch under them or go around them. You will also come across this electric floor trap which you either have to jump over or use a brick or bottle to be able to disarm it. Simply just aim at the middle and make sure you hit that. Moving on to door traps, you know a door is regular the trap when you see one of these lights on the side of it. To avoid it, either don't go through it or you can slow open it and disarm it from the other side and get a free battery. Or if you're in a hurry, just make sure to crouch and open the door and the cross will shoot over your head. Just make sure none of your friends are behind you as they will get hit by that trap. Okay, look, you can just crouch and quick open it. Oh, I, I, sorry. <laughs> Mines get louder as you get closer to them. You can disarm these by hitting them with a bottle. Just don't stand too close to them or it will still hit you. Rigged loot boxes will have one of these little pipes on the edge. Just step away as soon as you open it and let the gas spew out and dissipate. And then you can safely grab any items in the loot box. Next, we have what I like to call the little closet monsters. And this is one of the most annoying traps. These guys will take your hiding spots and jump out at you when you come across them. You can just decide to stay quiet and decide to creep by them. Them, or you can use a throwable to throw it at the hiding spot and it'll get them out. You'll usually hear them murmuring about something in the hiding spot or you'll see them doing a little peeky peek and then getting scared of you. If they do catch you lacking and grab you, know that you can use a bottle or a brick to quickly get them off you before they start pouncing. Next we have the clown bomb. You either want to really quickly pass these or just hit them with a throwable to disarm them. And at the trap is the screamers. If you've been playing this game, you are familiar. With them, you either want to be very quiet or you want to hit them with a throwable so that they can leave their current location. Get out of their way or they will slap you on the way out. Now, some quick tips for the rigs. One of the best rigs for avoiding enemies and traps is the x-ray rig. Traps become much easier to spot, especially glass which is usually annoying to try to watch out for. You can also see when a loot box is rigged before you actually open it, and see when an enemy is in a hiding spot, really just everything. X-ray is also very useful for collecting documents and posters just to help get that grade up. It's my personal recommendation on your first run through and if you're trying to get an A+. The catch for this is that it's not much of a team ability, it's kind of just for you. I know once you upgrade the enemies will be highlighted for your teammates as well, but overall it's just for you. The stun rig can be used not only to obviously stun enemies, but it can also be used to conveniently disarm traps, without needing to take up an extra slot to pick up a brick or a bottle. The stun rig does however stun enemies for a longer duration, making them more useful than any bottle or brick. The mine rig is also one of the most useful. If you place it next to an engine or next to the electric chair lever, once an enemy runs into it, it creates a cloud that enemies will basically be blind in and not be able to hit you. So you can just do whatever you need to inside of that cloud of smoke and you'll be perfectly safe. This is very useful for you and your team. The health rig is what it is. If you and your team take a lot of damage, you can heal everyone at once. Typically though, for a good grade, you want to avoid taking so much damage, so this might not be the most useful. Unless your only goal is just to beat the game with all your friends and don't really care about getting perfect grades, then have at it. This is probably the most team support one out of all of them with x-ray being the least team supported, in my opinion. Now going into pickup items, let me start by putting you guys onto the secret door. If you come across this blue door, there will be two buttons nearby. In solo, you have to press one, then run to the other. In multiplayer, you have to hold both at once. Once you unlock that door, you will basically be able to find every consumable pickup item in that room with a boosted version of each one. You'll get one permanent health, battery, and stamina booster along with a master key, which is used to unlock as many toolboxes as you want. The spawn for the room is random per trial. Even if you do the exact same trial on the exact same map, the room will be random every single time, so just hope you stumble upon it. Now for the bottles and the bricks, it's good to know that the glass bottle can be used to stun enemies, but it's better used as a distraction to get enemies to move locations. The brick is a better option for disarming traps and stunning enemies as it not only is stronger but can be used more than once. The stronger arm perk will be good for somebody who likes to throw things at enemies. If you need to consume anything while in a locker, you can. On PC, it's right click, I'm not sure what it is for console, but just know that it is possible to heal or whatever inside of a locker, or really any hiding spot. On top of that, you can also use your rigs while hiding. These 
these pills can be used to give you an extra life in single player, and it turns into syringe for multiplayer so that you can revive your teammates. Some tips for things to do, if you're sitting in the lobby board, you can challenge someone to an arm wrestling game or a game of chess, or decorate your room in character. I've literally had some of my best moments in this game playing arm wrestling, so don't sleep on it. You know, as I was making this video, I actually came up with an idea. Next weekend, on March 16th at 12 in the afternoon PST, I want to host an arm wrestling tournament. If you are interested, join the Discord down below, and I will update everybody on the tournament information. I will basically comp the winner's game, so basically I'll give the winner $40. I will be competing myself to try to keep my money so come try to take it from me make sure to pull up for that if no one joins then i'm just gonna keep my money if you're looking for a space to play arm wrestling or chess there are more tables upstairs that you can hop on to play against one of your friends now getting into the different types of enemies we already went over screamers and the closet monsters so let's go over the others this guy right here is blind and will immediately sprint to you if he hears you don't even stand near him as he might swing aimlessly and bind you randomly know that this guy does have night vision and can see you in the dark but if you do decide to go in the light he cannot see you the big guys and gals are stronger but a bit slower, my only advice is to run. They will open doors in one hit so try to move away. And next we got the normies which we can just run away or stun. Next we have the gassing dude, he's pretty to avoid but if he does catch you make sure to go to the closest antidote which should be marked on your screen. But know that you can actually take advantage of psychosis mode as while you're in that mode none of the other enemies will attack you. So if done correctly you can actually use this to your advantage. With Psychosis, you will only have to worry about the Skinner Man, and if you do end up outlasting the Psychosis, it will completely deplete. Mother Gooseberry and Sheriff Coil are also very strong like the big guys, and should be avoided at all costs. In general, with enemies, you either want to just get out of dodge, or get out of sight and try to hide. With the stronger characters, you really don't want to get caught, and the good thing is that they usually stick out. Sheriff Coil has his nightstick that glows blue and makes an electricity noise, while Mother Gooseberry is usually yapping to herself and playing with her toy drill. General advice for dodging enemies, try to vault when you can. Sometimes things don't look vaultable, but they are. Also, when an enemy is beginning to swing, you can try to jump dodge out of the way. When running, you can lock doors by holding the lock as shown here. No, not every door is lockable, and they will still be able to break down that door, sometimes in one hit. You can quickly close doors as you run past them, as shown here, which is probably the best way to get away from an enemy. Of course, there was always the fight back option with bricks and bottles. For some multiplayer tips, you can help kick an enemy off of a teammate or get the cross trap off of a teammate's chest. Basically, any type of enemy and player animation can be stopped if another player is nearby. Shortcuts can be unlocked by either opening doors together or helping a player jump over a wall. Pinging is a must-use feature, even if you're playing alone. Use pings to live ping enemies, also use pings to mark a trap, especially with those closet monsters. And if you want to add for some extra fun, make sure to take advantage of the proximity chat. Some final tips to go quickly between game to game. Once you exit from a trial, you can click whatever your menu button is and start loading your next trial. From here, you can also access your loadout perks, rigs, and attributes instead of needing to run around everywhere. Once you do become reborn, you do not need to play through the entire game again. It will be become much easier, all you need to do is gather a certain amount of tokens and become reborn. To see how many you need, just go up to the police officer here. To acquire tokens, you simply just have to complete more trials, either new or old trials you've already completed. Getting an A plus is very rewarding in terms of in-game currency. To get an A plus, you basically want to stay hidden and get hit very few times and run into very little to no traps. I don't expect people to be getting an A plus first go, but with repetition you guys will get it. My biggest error is running into glass, so really watch out for that broken glass. It will tank your grid. Also make sure to collect those posters as it is necessary to reach an A+. There is plenty of more to go over for this game, so if you guys do want to see any more tips, let me know down below. Also let me know any important ones I forgot. I still need to personally go over all the perks and decide which ones are the best ones and or funnest ones to use. So yeah, hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more. Till next time, love you, see ya.